I'm Veronica Laughlin. I played the police officer in Darkness. But you weren't Veronica Laughlin in Darkness. No, I Darkness. was Veronica Page Denon. Now just give me the gun and we will all be all right. I'm Jake Uecker. I, I played, my character name was John. It's too late. There is nothing we can do. But I'm the first guy that goes rain down the street and then dies a couple times in the first 10 minutes of filming. <laughs> my name is Michael Giesick and I played Greg in the movie. Diane? Diane? Wait! My name is Lisa Dooley and I played Diane in the movie. My name is Kara Wilson and I was in the movie. I was behind the scenes of the movie. A little bit of everything. I'm Chris Michael and uh, I was Steve in the film. And I was the one who was uh, brutally killed in the car wash. <laughs> Uh, my name is Randall Avix. Uh, I play the uh, I play live in the Vampire. Hi, my name is Gary Miller. I play uh, Toby, the Vampire Hunter. Yeah, I was in Thespians, and one of the other guys at our school told me they were having auditions. We actually met at a local movie theater. A whole bunch of us from the the drama troupe and met with the director. Started working on the movie and then things kind of fell apart for about a year over the summer. I was working in a video store in Wichita and uh, one night I was in there by myself and this really big scary looking Viking guy came in wearing a baseball hat with a monster head on it that said vampires. Finally asked him what it was about and he had tried to do the movie once and uh, I think people ran out on him or something but it, it kind of fell apart and uh, we started talking about it. We ended up talking to like three or four in the morning. I told him I wanted to do, act and, do effects and uh, I think it was quite a year, maybe six, eight months later, they had the casting call. Tell us, um, I guess your name, your phone number, how you found out about this and uh, why you want to do it. Seeing Adonim, I'm 17 years old. I found this out from a guy named Mike Gesick, who I went to school with at West High. And you don't have any adversity uh, ripping people to shreds? If Not at all. <laughs> okay. I first heard about the film in Miss Gina Austin Fresh's drama class. Did a casting call as an extra for extra credit for our drama class. Got a call back to be the lead girl, Kelly. Oh my God! I saw a flyer, I think at Kirby's Beer Store, uh, that said Vampires Wanted. <laughs> and I wanted to be a vampire, so I headed straight down for the audition. My name's Jake Uecker. Um I found out about the movie or a poster at Kirby's and another one at Music Incorporated. And what's my final question? Why, why, why do I want to do the movie? Because I'm interested in the horror movies. I love them and always have. Right? I saw a flyer. I don't know where I saw the flyer. I'm Veronica Dennett. I'm 17 years old and she had the flyer. You still have your flyer, don't you, I still you, have Veronica? my flyer. <laughs> and uh, I, I liked vampires, so yeah. I, I was up for that. And I went down and I did my audition. And I like, I've always loved vampire movies, get into blood and gore, just sounded like something I'd enjoy. And then later at some point, Leaf called me and he saw me at a dementia concert, stage diving. Uh -huh. And he said <laughs> that, uh, we need that talent Yeah, in the movie. well he said I was tall and I had a deep voice. Oh that's right, because you be played a, a cop. cop. Right. My name is Chris Michael and I'm 15. My dad drove me over and, you know, I brought a resume and did a little screen test, if I remember right. Are you adverse to pretty much sinking your teeth into people and ripping them up at TV? Yeah, TV, sure. But you might have fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was working at the time at a uh, comic book shop. And uh, Leaf, Leaf had come in uh, hanging up Vampires Wanted. Pretty pretty cool flyer. My name's Rand Lavix. Well, talk about you for life, but if you were to pick something else, the primary vampire one time or another. I'd prefer to be honest. Yeah, well, everybody would. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> but, you know, why do you want to do this? I want to be a vampire. You know how many adversities you can turn people up? Yeah, I'm you know, getting that goofy stuff. stuff. All that jetting out of your mouth. I don't want to be the epitome of vampire. Fortunately for me, when he came back in town, 
Leaf called me up and had a new part for me, a new tweaked up script, and they held open auditions for everybody else, and I got to go down and watch other people audition. I got started in the movie because um, I was actually dating Gary Miller at the time, so I kind of just got asked and thrown into it. And... Gary Miller is my older brother, and so I got involved with him doing a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, and half the time I'd be on the set and they'd be like, hey, let's put you in this scene in the back to fill <laughs> things in. How old were you when we did this? I was uh, 19. 19? I was 17. I was still in high school. I was Veronica, 17. you were 17 when I was we 17 when this started, because you will always be 10 years older than me. We That's right, because we decided I was 27. Right, and I thought you were 17, too. No, I wasn't. Met, but you weren't at all. Uh, I was 15. I was 15, freshman in high school, you know. I was 16. I was 17. I was 14 years old. Yeah, I was a little 14-year-old kid out in the middle of the night with my big brother playing with blood and ex little squib explosives and everything we weren't supposed to be playing with. <laughs> so, stealing electricity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, stealing electricity <laughs> from people, you know. Running around the streets of Wichita. Uh, we had this generator that was so loud we could rarely use it. And uh, a lot of times we found like stores, you know, well, actually we plugged into banks a couple times. We were like plugging into an electrical socket on the outside of the bank. Cops never came. I don't know how we got away with that. I figured, you know, it was going to set off some bank security alarm draining their power. There, there was a lot of times it was just a blast because it was stuff I'd never done before. I mean, that was the first time I was ever really staying out all night. We're running around down city streets. I had never shot guns before. You know, we're, we're shooting shotguns Kidding. in the city, you know. We're running down the streets in the middle of the night. You know, the vampire extras would show up. It was always just whatever kid showed up. But most of the time, I'd never met them before. I didn't even know them. So it's like all these punker kids coming out in the middle of the night, you know, and uh, it, it was unbelievable. It, it was it was a, a kid's dream come true, running around shooting guns and killing vampires, and it was awesome. Yeah, it was fun trying to explain to my parents numerous times that I was out all night with my boyfriend filming a movie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of hard to go over. So they actually have proof now that that's what I was really doing, <laughs> although they've never seen the movie. You know, they've never asked, so I just kind of assume they didn't want to. <laughs> I think my mom has issues seeing her daughter get macheted to death. <laughs> I think I may have been the only guy in the movie that died twice. Maybe. Uh, no, I think there was Stab, Stab Guy. Stab Guy dies twice? Well, he, I don't know, he goes down and then gets Comes back, back oh and yeah, again, all right, so it's me and Stab Guy. Before, making this movie and during making this movie and for a little while after making the movie I was a Sunday school teacher for the second graders in our church and I went from Sunday school teacher to obliterating Mike with a machete in the movie <laughs> I think I shocked a lot of people who, who didn't expect to see that side of me on TV, but I think everybody was pretty pleased with how it came out. That was an interesting scene, that, and uh, in that, it involved everything from being run down by the vampires, and if I remember correctly, tackled by one of them, which was a pretty, he, pretty, he had a pretty good tackle, if I remember right. And there's always an element of you're allowing yourself to be dragged a little bit, but I remember uh, some of that action was sort of had some realism because one of the vampires was trying to pull my arm towards their mouth one time and I was really resisting. It wasn't uh, traumatizing or anything really, it was just... Uh, I don't know, it was sort of exciting. It, it didn't, at times I was like, wow, this is kind of weird, especially between takes, uh, when things got a little bloodier. And of all the, you know, everybody being doused in gore and all the open wounds and, uh, you know, yeah, real bloody activity, 
people watch the movie and they really they, they freak out that I was actually underground and that it was actually buried and let let that happen to me. It was it was actually pretty cool. It was actually be, uh, pretty cool being buried. We had a lot of long hours out in the cold. And by cold, I don't mean chilly. I mean freeze your butt off. Literally teeth chattering and Leaf having to say, okay, take a deep breath. You've got to quit chattering. You've got to quit shaking. <laughs> Incredible freezing when you're wet, soaked in blood. So I felt pretty bad for old Lisa. I was just trying to do my best to not move and screw up anything, <laughs> but it was a long time, four hours, but <laughs> for what, five minutes of film or something? I remember I had to have help getting up because I was so stiff I couldn't even get up. Oh, let alone all the blood but, being stuck to yeah, the cement. Yeah. yeah, luckily I had cheap vinyl seats in my car, so <laughs> it was easy to get the blood out. <laughs> Me? Are you talking to me? Action. We shot in two nights. In the first night, I got corn syrup on my thumb, not not so bad. And the second night, I I couldn't get off the floor. I couldn't get myself off the floor. Oh right, because you were so much physically stuck. Yeah, to the there floor. was so much corn syrup poured onto my stomach. It was awful. And, it tasted and awful. And my hair, it, smelled. it did. I didn't eat. I didn't eat pancakes. We talked about this a couple years later, I think. Yeah. That we didn't eat pancakes for a long time. I wish someone had told me I was twitching too much. Oh, did you? Oh, you didn't. Tw I thought you twitched nicely. No, it was it was way too much. It felt good at the time, but it was it was overacting. Oh, I think. Veronica, look, we can all go back <laughs> and pick apart our performances of 15 years ago and yeah, I don't say, know. "Yours was pretty flawless." Oh yeah, yeah that's how I think of it. <laughs> I know Joe Bob Briggs did too no. when he said I blubbered. <laughs> I felt pretty comfortable, surprisingly, and actually, I remember. Uh, kind of laying there and the first few takes the blood wasn't working and uh, and actually you know I was uh, because I was pretty comfortable I was like come on come on you know come on thing work and it finally did action guys well, there was there was a lot of stuff that was just, it was bizarre at the time um, well I, I'm sorry it seems bizarre now at the time it seemed like it's normal okay you know drive up to uh, where we're going to meet and here's, okay, there's 30 people I've never seen before and i got to drag a bunch of old extension cords and some equipment out of the car and plug it in and just find an outlet somewhere and, uh, okay, you over here, you over here, and it's like, okay, now go get the bucket, here's the bucket, okay, you're bloody, you're not, you're bloody, and, uh, all right, let's shoot this fucker, you know, <laughs> that's kind of what it was sometimes. Vampire boot camp. I remember when we were uh, filming certain scenes, the bullets weren't real, but they were blanks, but... They, we never had a permit to shoot them, so we would have to, in the dark, shoot the guns. They had the whole crew set up, all the cameras were set up, and then we just have to take Half off. running. The people that did it <laughs> with the equipment that was used to make the loud boom, <laughs> they had to take off while Leaf was always left behind to clean everything up. And the people would show up, he's like, uh, maybe it was a backfire, I don't know. No. I didn't see. We were Everybody filming a movie. Their cars and and it, run off. Yeah, everybody would take off. Uh, that was that was some of the excitement. What well, what did you think about uh, you know we, we saw it here uh, had the premiere on the big screen last week. What was that like seeing yourself on the big screen? I uh, that this this whole thing being a being able to go to uh, the nicest theater in town and go see your movie your freaking face on the poster in the lobby that that by far is just i mean that's uh that's excellent hey, you were signing autographs uh, yeah and, and never in a million years 
would I have thought that that would happen? I mean, I realized that at the time it, it was a small little movie. I think that I, 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 I hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm quoted as being the person saying this is the uh, garage band movie. Um, I really thought this is just, I, I, I knew that it wasn't, uh, some goofy little thing that Leap was doing and nothing would ever come up or, you know, come from it. I just, uh, I thought it was his demo tape. And, um, um, but 10 years later, it's, you know, there's DVD releases in the movies bootlegged and, you know, bootlegged and traded on the internet and it's available in, in German video stores and there's Japanese releases of it and it's just, but nothing, nothing will ever, ever floor me as much as just coming to this, you know, huge theater and, uh, there it is, the movie is playing, you know, Leif Yonkers, Darkness and My Ugly Faces on the, on the poster and it just the whole thing. Yeah, uh, that was that was a great night. Put that one in the wind column. That yeah. was that was probably one of the uh, best ones ever. That was a good night. And the premiere was great. We had a, we had a lot of people out there. It was like a big reunion, getting to see a whole bunch of people again. So. That was awesome. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Ten, thirteen years later, the week before Halloween, to have it playing in one of the premier theaters in our area was exciting and to be able to go throughout the week and see people in the theater actually watching it hearing people clap and just enjoying it and seeing posters everywhere and yeah. i even heard about it on the radio the other day they're talking about you know if you've got halloween plans cancel them go see this movie instead so it was really cool oh, yeah people were talking about all the posters they had seen yeah, everywhere put saw up them everywhere at the emporium yeah. and yeah. all over town yes i did i got to see it last night amazing um it, it was just uh you know, I saw some of the clips on television, and I think my mom and dad have one of the first cuts of the full movie. So I had seen it before, but not as large, yep. you know, obviously. It's impressive how much uh, people put into it, despite the fact that it was so, like you said, over the top. I had seen it uh, about seven months earlier out in, at a film festival in North Carolina at Kukaloris, and uh, it had. See, what was different there is nobody there knew us. I mean, it was just Leaf and I were the only two people there from the film. And it was just, it was crazy. It was insane. There was like thunderous applause and people laughing and screaming through the whole thing. We were like, damn, we wish everybody else could be here. So, you know, to finally get to see it with you guys was something that I know Leaf and I were uh, really looking forward to. It was really cool. It's, and it's, it's played for a whole week. So the film has actually finally had a real theatrical run. And it's awesome. It was just insane. It's something that we never figured was going to happen. You had this whole plan from the beginning. Let's, yeah, let's not a long -term beat plan. around the bush. You were waiting for that theater. It was exciting. I mean, I thought the awesome. premiere was exciting it was... To, to have this pay off 15 years late. I mean, what I mean to say is it was just like this really delayed. Someone at the commentary group said it, I think, best is I don't think we would have appreciated how much fun and right. how much coolness there was if we had done it right when we were 17 and 19 was, and 15 mm -hmm. and however old but to be in well an older state to that's to cool. come to a beautiful theater with great lights and searchlights in the sky and a marquee and and big screen and stadium seats and they bring <laughs> you food and and whatever you, you want and and um it's that was cool. a blast that was that was probably one of the highlights of my life so far but i did well, sign an autograph on, on at the premiere I did too. Someone yeah. I didn't know. Someone I didn't know autograph. walked up to me and said, "Hey, just saw my poster." I'm like, Probably "Yeah." Could... My husband was shocked. He was excited and ecstatic, and told everybody we could think of. Got a lot of good laughs, but at the same time, he was very impressed with the quality and how good we all did, and just um, really thrilled. This time, I was also pregnant with child number three about around seven to eight months when we first started doing some of this again. Where we went to go see it on the big screen, I was having contractions in the theater. My wife Victoria and my three kids all came down to the premiere and the kids loved it. They've got posters that they had signed by the director and by other people and there was other kids in the neighborhood that came through and they all had, you know, Leaf as the director sign it and had me sign it and you know, just having kids from my neighborhood asking for my autograph. It was all, it was kind of fun. My kids have actually seen, like, uh, my two older ones have seen the trailers from it and parts of the first version that came out. They've seen parts of that. And as a matter of fact, I was talking to my son Tyler, who's 12, 
in the car today about it. And he was like, he was so mad at me because I didn't bring him last weekend. He was so mad at me. And I was like, okay, well, when we get the copy, you can watch the whole thing. And he's like, all right. He thought the, coast, the poster that I brought home was very cool. He's decided it's going in his room. So. A few days before the movie opened up here, uh, there was a pretty large article about Lee from the movie and the making of darkness and all that and kind of advertising the fact that the movie was going to play here in uh, my face. My face was uh, the uh, big picture of the article and it said Randall Avix is live and I will be appearing this Friday in Leave Yonkers Darkness, whatever. My uh, uh, daughter and my son attend, a school, uh, attend school at the same school, uh, unbeknownst to me, the principal or someone who worked in the principal's office recognized my face in the picture and had uh, those articles delivered to both oh, my son. Oh, Yeah, so. And your dad's in the paper. I just, and then that's the first time I convinced my kids that I was actually, they, they thought I was lying to them. You know, I have a <laughs> five-year-old and a 10-year-old and they thought this is a, oh yeah, yeah, you're not in a movie, Dad. <laughs> that's cool, that's way cool. So. Um, my, my father, my father, only recently though, finally discovered that it's an actual movie and not some sort of weird, you know, snuff, <laughs> snuff art film or something. I'm at a point now where I've gone a different career path. I'm leading up to the terminal degree in that field. Uh, I was, I was sitting, well, my dissertation committee sitting in front of me, and before we actually started, you know, that one of them was kind of wandering in the door. We were getting ready to start. This was yesterday. I passed my proposal. I mentioned that I was going to pop into Wichita right after this, you know, to go see the movie, and uh, uh, one of my professors on my committee was like, well, you'll have to get everybody a copy, you know, it's like you're 15 and getting blood all over you, we want to see that. You know? <laughs> so. I would just like everybody to know that it's not actually my ass. Well, it was my ass, but it was covered up by white boxer shorts, and they didn't like the way that that showed up on film, so they covered it with blood. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure your mom would like everybody to know that yeah, too. Yeah, I'm sure she would too, yeah. <laughs> I have a person in my life who still asks me to, um, whenever things are kind of going rough, um, she almost requires of me to to confront her and tell her that everything is going to be all right. <laughs> but that was I made so her wrong. A, I made her a poster one time <sighs> when things were so bad, and it was I had a photograph of me laying dead in the convenience store, and I photocopied it, and and I wrote, everything's gonna be all right across the top this of it. This is because Veronica playing the cop told me, <laughs> playing the hysterical victim, that everything was gonna, everything be, all was gonna right. be all right. And it, it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, Which is why I don't say it anymore. Objectively, by First, any I standards, say, it was not all right, right what I happened. Say, now I say, we're all gonna die before I do anything. Right. I never say, oh, it's gonna be fine. I say, no, we're I think all gonna you should die. stick with that. Because that way, it, it just really can't go you can't go any further from that. If you're right about you that, then you're, you're just right. couldn't have been more wrong. No. <laughs> I'm still angry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm mad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're all going to die. I think that was your line. You were right. I was right because I said, you know, it's too fucking late. We're it all going to die. <laughs> right. Bingo. All, all my memories are fond memories. You know, even, I mean, even when we filmed and it was freezing cold and the weather was bad, I mean... I had a blast doing the whole oh, entire yeah. thing. I mean, we might have complained and bitched and. Oh you know, yeah, we did. God, how long is this gonna take? You know, the stupid teenagers. But I don't think they were all fun. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I remember many times saying, "I gotta go to work," or "I'm going to this this other particular party," and something wouldn't have gone right in a shoot, and we had to go back and redo, and Leaf would just be like. You're gonna stay. I don't care. I'll call your boss. I'll tell him that you know you can't you can't come in, but you've got to finish this scene. I've got all these people here, and I just remember that. And I had so much fun, but I do remember certain times. See, I, I never wish... got invited to any parties, so I wasn't missing. <laughs> <laughs> My feelings about the film today. I'm very proud of what we did. I had a lot of fun, and I have a lot of respect for the people that I was in it with. I made a lot of good friends. I just want to say thank you for the chance to be a part of everything, and I wish you the best. I'd like to say hi to my mom. Rock on. Uh, my mom is not going to see this, let's face <laughs> it. <laughs> if we're going to wrap up, I uh, just one thing I want to some people I want to say thanks to would, uh, would be my mom and dad, who uh, were, were supportive through good and bad. I mean, but uh, they actually helped quite a bit with me on the film. Mom's actually in the movie, my sister's in the movie. Uh, 
anytime I couldn't figure something out, I could always ask my dad, you know, dad, how do I build this, you know, and my family was always pretty open with it. They were always pretty supportive. Thanks, folks. I'd like to thank his parents, too, because <laughs> my parents never did shit for me, you know? I'm not kidding. No, I love my mom. I love I love my mom, love my dad, love love my uh, love my kids. Love Gary Miller. I love his kids too. Yeah. Love love Good Gary kids. Miller. Love Lee. Uh, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Anything. This is gonna happen. be a musical. Someone's gonna write Darkness the musical at some point. But th that's what I want to say is that now this right. thing is out there and anything can, we, there's no way we that's can right. guess what's going to happen next. Nope. Already this was too much to guess <laughs> and there's just going to be more. You just, you just don't see a thing like that coming mm. when you're 17 covered in corn syrup. <clears throat> Pittsburgh, 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 Pit, 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 Pittsburgh. <laughs> At Lockner, I'm 15. Um, we were in the sound warehouse one night, got the last flyer, thought it would be fun. This is my kind of film because I love horror films and it just sounds like a neat thing to do. No regrets. No, that was absolutely a blast. Not. It was a wonderful time. It was fun to film, and now it's fun 15 years now, later. <laughs> now, many, many years later, I smiled when I ate pancakes rather than threw up. Yeah, yeah, and so it's it's a better value than most films because this one has been entertaining us for 15 years. That's right. Most of them last 90 minutes. <laughs> My name is Champ Marshall. Um, I'm 17. I found out the film by talking to Gary Miller, who's working in, and, is, and is involved with the film. One specific time that I can remember is when my little brother was caught on fire in the garage, coming through the garage door by a squib. That was a good one. A um, couple of others, um, seeing Gary puke up nasty stuff. That was a good one. He's your newbie. Um, I'm 21. And why I want to be a vampire? Sounds like a lot of fun. That was probably the most bloody I'd ever gotten for the whole movie, and uh, yeah, I mean, it took an hour of just getting a fake flesh and spirit gum and tubing, and I'm hooked up to this massive 100 psi <laughs> blood tank. You know, I just I thought I was like being set off as the uh, human sacrifice bomb. <laughs> it was spooky. And you guys were listening to hair. These guys, these guys, these with, the, you know, uh, the thing and the prophecy posters on the wall and fake skulls and chunks of flesh everywhere, they, they did nothing but listen to the hair, the, the, the soundtrack to the musical hair. And uh, this just, man, what a psychotic night. <laughs> it's Randall Moore, uh, age 22. I don't know, I just love horror movies. Yeah, sure That's it. Sounds good. I'll be calling it. We started the first one when I was a sophomore and then finished when I was a junior senior. And then I think we did some rework when I was 20 and then we did some voice work when I was 30. <laughs> so it, actually it kind of progressed over a long period of time. Over about 10 years and 120 pounds is how, the, how long the movie took. Uh, my name is Brian Cardwell. I wouldn't mind being a hero. I'm a primary vampire spawn. I'll take just about anything. I just want to act. So how many times have you gotten laid because of darkness? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, no. Um, uh. <laughs> 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 Ever 
every time I've mentioned it, mm-hmm. it's, it's, <laughs> it's never helped. <laughs> Thing out of my fucking face!